Hi scholars, welcome back to science. Today we are learning about lesson four, a really fun one. It's animals of the East African savanna habitat. If you look here on the map, this is the continent of Africa. And our little highlighted portion is where we're focusing our habitat studies on today. But before we begin the lesson, let's review some of the other habitats that we have uh, explored with Rattenboro. He first took us to the Arctic tundra and the Arctic Ocean. Remember, that's in the northern part of our planet. The second area that Rattenboro took us to was the Sonoran Desert, which can be found on the continent of North America. In this United States, the states of California and Arizona, and in the country of Mexico, the northwestern part there. So follow me and Rattenboro as we discover the animals of the East African savanna habitat. Let's begin with our vocabulary. What are you listening for today? Our first word is coexist. Please say coexist with me. Coexist, thank you. That means to live peacefully together at the same time or in the same place. For example, the cat and dog were able to coexist in my grandmother's home. Our next vocabulary word Hardy. Please say hardy with me. Hardy. Hardy means to be able to survive in unfavorable or harsh conditions. For example, cacti are hardy plants, able to survive in the harsh conditions of the desert. Our next vocabulary word Predators. Please say predators with me. Predators. Thank you. That means animals that hunt and eat other animals. And when you have a predator, you must have our next vocabulary word. Prey. Please say prey with me. Prey. Thank you. That means an animal that is hunted by other animals. Our final vocabulary word for this lesson today. Prickly. Please say prickly with me. Prickly. Thank you. That means small and sharp. For example, the cactus's spines are prickly. Our goal today, what is our purpose for listening? It is to find out how the East African savanna habitat may be the same or different from the Arctic tundra and the Sonoran Desert. I'm going to write the word savanna for you today. Let's begin. Rattenboro, your intrepid or fearless adventurer here to show you something a little different. We've been talking about habitats, the places where plants and animals live, and we've spent time in three of the most extreme habitats in the world, the freezing Arctic tundra, the Arctic ocean, and the scorching Sonoran desert. Now, I've come to a habitat that should be of great interest to you. Some of the most famous animals in the world live here. Welcome to the East African Savanna. Savanna is another name for grassland, a wide open vast stretch of grass covered land. You know you're in a grassland when there are lots of grass around you, but not many bushes or trees. The East African Savanna has very warm weather all year round. However, it only has two seasons, the rainy summer and the dry winter. The plants and animals that live here have had to adapt to these very different kinds of weather in the summer and in the winter. Luckily, I brought my umbrella in case it starts to pour. 
Boy, I can barely see a thing in this tall grass. There's so much of it. As the name grassland suggests, grass is the most important plant in all of the savannas. The grasses are very hardy, which means they can survive the tough conditions of their habitat. Long spells of dry, hot weather, as well as heavy rainfall and flooding. The grass has adapted to these conditions by growing very deep roots. Even if the grass above the ground is destroyed, the roots underground survive and the grass can grow back. The grass grows very quickly, as much as an inch per day. The grass in your backyard might take a whole week to grow an inch. Yikes, I'm surrounded by hooves. That's because the grass is food for many of the larger animals, like elephants, zebras, gazelles, and antelope. They chew on grass all day long. I don't think that grass is all that tasty, to tell the truth, but these animals depend on the nutrients in the grass to survive. It's all they need to eat. It would seem that because so many animals eat the grass in the savannas all day, there wouldn't be much grass left after a while. But remember, this grass grows back very quickly. So there's usually plenty for the different herbivores like zebras and antelope to eat. Grass is not the only important source of food in the savanna. Many animals get their meals from the acacia tree. Let's say acacia together. Acacia, thank you. Giraffes, like you see here, with their long necks and tongues, are able to eat twigs and leaves from the top of the acacia. Not only are giraffes' tongues long, they are very tough. It is a good thing too, because the twigs of the acacia tree are covered with sharp thorns that the giraffes eat along with the twigs and leaves. Elephants, like you see here, eat grass and they like acacias too. They rest in the acacia shade and eat the acacia leaves, branches, and seeds. They even like to strip the bark off of it and chew on it. I think this acacia tree might be great to climb and get a better look at the savanna. But don't forget that it's covered in prickly thorns. Ouch! Acacias have adapted well to their habitat. Acacias have small leaves that don't dry out as quickly as larger leaves would in the dry, hot months. The roots of the acacia grow very deep into the ground, which allow them to collect water from far underground when there is not much rainfall. Its sharp thorns help keep some animals from eating too many of its branches. These trees are right at home in this habitat. Animals living in the savanna have adapted to their habitat in many ways. Some animals, like the giraffe, have long, powerful legs so that they can run quickly away from predators, animals that hunt and kill other animals. Their long legs also help them travel long distances when searching for food. Can you imagine a rat like me keeping up with a giraffe or a zebra? Not a chance. Now, there's a little bird that's been sitting on the giraffe the whole time I've been watching. This is an oxpecker. Oxpecker perch on the backs of large animals like you see here. This oxpecker will use its sharp claws to hold onto the giraffe, who will hardly even know that it's there. The giraffe and the oxpecker coexist. Now, remember what that means. When animals coexist, it means they live peacefully together. The oxpecker feeds on the fleas and ticks living on the giraffe's body and warns the giraffes of any predators that might be trying to sneak up on it. In turn, the giraffe will let the oxpecker live on its back and provide the oxpecker food, which are the fleas and the ticks. 
It also provides shelter and protection from predators. The oxpecker will spend most of its life on the giraffe's back. What a partnership. So here I am, back in all of this tall grass, and I bet you recognize the black and white stripes of the zebra I just ran into. Zebras are specially adapted to living in the savanna. They have strong, long legs that make them very good at outrunning lions and other predators. And the stripes on the zebra's legs and body don't just make them look pretty, they camouflage the zebra against the grass so that predators can't see it. Zebras eat the grass on the savanna, so they are herbivores. Over there, I can see the largest land animal in the world. Can you guess what it is? That's right, it's an elephant. This African elephant is very big and eats up to 400 pounds of trees and grasses every day. That's about the same weight as nine first graders put together. African elephants are adapted to the hot weather in the savanna. They have huge ears that flap like fans to stay cool and to keep away bugs. They also have thick skin which protects them from branches and thorns. Do you see the trunk on this elephant? An elephant uses its trunk for all sorts of things. The trunk is, of course, the elephant's nose for breathing and smelling. But the trunk is also used like a hand for lifting things, gathering food, and even holding on to other elephants' tails. Baby elephants, or calves, use their trunks to grasp other elephants' tails to keep them from wandering away from the rest of the herd and getting lost. Elephants also use their trunks to drink water. They suck up the water with their trunks and then put water from the trunk into their mouths. They also use their trunks like a hose for showers and playtime. These animals are lions. Lions live in groups called prides. The females, or lionesses, do most of the hunting. They are carnivores and they hunt zebras, elephants, and all kinds of other savanna animals. Most groups of lions have just one or two male lions. The male lion, like this one pictured here, is huge and incredibly strong. It has a furry mane powerful jaws, and fearsome claws. Unless this lion meets a stronger lion, no other animal in the savanna habitat can match the lion's strength and power. Animals that are hunted by predators are called prey. One of the lion's favorite prey to hunt and eat are zebras. Zebras try to use the camouflage of their stripes to hide in the grasses of the savanna so the lions will not see them. Up at the top of this tree, I can see and hear birds that are waiting for the lions to finish eating so that they can have their dinner. These birds are called vultures. A vulture is a scavenger, which as you have learned, is an animal that eats leftovers. All of the animals and plants you've learned about so far are part of something that we call the food chain, which is illustrated in this image. Let's say those words together again. Food chain. Thank you. What do you see at the bottom of this picture? It is the savanna grass. The arrow points from the savanna grass to the zebra because the zebra eats the grass. The next arrow points from the zebra to the lion because, well, you guessed it, the lion eats the zebra. And the next picture after our lion is a picture of soil because eventually the lion dies 
and its body will become part of the soil. Then more grass grows out of the soil and that starts the chain all over again. Next, I think we should head to a habitat that's a bit closer to home and explore some plants and animals that might look quite familiar to us. But for now, I'm going to check out more wildlife. I'll see you later.